This is David Diaz, former WBC lightweight champion of the world, and you're listening to The Grueling Truth. Hey, welcome everybody to The Grueling Truth Inside Boxing Weekly Show, where we review the fights from last week, preview the fights coming up. Um, I'm your host, Mike Goodpastor, and I want to welcome in my co-host, Jeremiah Pricer. Hello, everybody. Glad to be on. Uh, glad to have everybody listen. All right, um, let's go. We're going to do this a little bit differently than we do most weeks because we've got a guest tonight. So we will preview, review fights uh, more probably ten minutes into the show. But tonight we got a special guest, former welterweight champion of the world, who's making his comeback tomorrow night in Pennsylvania against Eduardo Flores. Help us welcome to the grueling truth, Kermit Centron. Hey, for having me, Mike. Hey, it's always great to have you on, Kermit. Kermit was even on our weekly NFL Pick'em show to one week. Oh, yeah, big football Yeah, you know what? How, 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 did, I, how did I do? I, I didn't even know whatever happened to my, my stats. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think any of us did too good that week, though, so that's why I don't think anybody no. brought it up. If uh, you don't well, hear us bring it up the next week, that means we all suck. <laughs> uh, I guess so. <laughs> Either that or you kicked our ass and we didn't want to bring it up, so you never know. But um, tell us a little bit about tomorrow night. It's your first fight in two years. I think you're fighting in your home state. Just tell us what went into the preparation, and I'm sure you're ready to go for tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, de- I'm definitely ready for tomorrow. I'm excited, you know, just to be back. Um, like I said, it's, you know, it's been two two years uh, since I fought, and that's just because of, uh, you know, it's a hand injury that I had to get surgery uh, and needed some time to really heal. Uh, in order for me to uh, continue my career. So um, that's why it's been out for two years. Um, but, you know, the preparation went very well. Uh, you know, the whole entire time I was having fun with my training camp. And, you know, to me that's important. Uh, you know, there was, there were some camps that I I personally didn't have any fun with it. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, your job should be fun as well, not just, you know, everything has to be serious. Uh, so, you know, it kind of helps out the fact that, you know, I want to train. So, uh, you know, um, well, tomorrow I'm fighting Eduardo uh, Flores, who's from Ecuador, uh, our tough opponent, you know, which I think is a perfect opponent for me uh, for my first fight coming back. Um, I believe he's, like, 23 with, like, 20 losses, 23 winning, 20 losses, something like that, with, like, um, I don't know, 16 knockouts? I'm not sure exactly uh, his record. Yeah, I think but, it was uh, like 20, 23 and 20, two draws, and like 15 or 16 KOs. Yeah, yeah, it's 23-23 yeah. 20, 23 and 15 knockouts. Yep. There we go. That's a good opponent for me, uh, you know, and I'm ready I'm ready for him uh, tomorrow. You know, I just want to go in there and just, uh, you know, uh, be my old self, uh, going in there and just, you know, uh, knocking fighters out. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, being be my, my my old self again uh, from, like, the early days of my career where I was just coming in there and just, uh, you know, uh, pushing the opponent back and, you know, and just throw my shots, you know. Uh, and, and, and you know, now, now that I'm hoping for the knockout, I know that the knockout will come. I just have to, you know, just go in there and just let my hands go. All right, Jeremiah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, Flores, uh, he's actually fought quite a good number of people. Like, he's hes fought Junior Castillo and Alex Sacido, uh, Evge, oh, geez, how do you say the name of Kavielowskis, uh, Kanat Islam, Diego Chavez. Uh, I was just wondering, what exactly is your plan going into the fight? Is it, you know, as a tall guy, you know, you're 5'11", 6 foot, uh, I take it as it, is it just a jab, work behind the right hand, you know, utilize the hook every now and then? I'm just gonna smack him with my jazz, and I'm gonna do. You know, he's a short, uh, short guy. Uh, he's five six, so you know, definitely gonna be using my jab a lot. Um, and you know, just just uh, follow up with uh, some hard shots. You know, uh, you know, every, everything's gonna come come after my jab. You know, my jab is, is the first thing, and uh, you know, set everything up from there. All right, now your weigh-in was uh, just a few hours ago. Would you weigh in at? Or are you comfortable at the weight, and do you plan on staying there in the future? Uh, I ended up uh, weighing at 153.9, uh, almost 154. Uh, I mean, it, the contract was for 154 plus one. Um, you know, I, I feel good. Uh, but, you know, 
I'm not sure if this is where I want to stay or do I still want to, you know, work my way down to uh, the welterweight division, which is 147. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll we'll see how I feel tomorrow uh, during the fight and, and after the fight. Um, but right now I feel strong and just, you know, just excited. I mean, just I uh, feel light, fast. Um, you know, mentally I, I feel great. I, you know, I'm, I'm focused. Uh, so, you know, definitely uh, excited for tomorrow. Yeah, so as a, uh, you know, as somebody who may work themselves down to welterweight, I was wondering, granted, granted everything goes, you know, goes well, you knock Flores out, you know, you have another comeback fight or two or however many it takes for you to get comfortable. I'm wondering, what, what do you see for your prospects at 147? Do you, do you see them as better than 154? Uh, you know, because 147, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty loaded with talent. 154 is... You know, it has some good fighters as well. What what do you see as as the most pro, the most promising avenue of success? Um, honestly, uh, you know, I, I'm just gonna take it a fight at a time. Uh, you know, just uh, like my next fight, you know, I would want it to be, uh, you know, anywhere 150, 151, uh, and just to, you know, just again, just to see how my body feels, and you know, and the following fight after that. You know, make it at 148, 149. You know, and just, and just go from there. Um, but I, there's, I know the, the welterweight division is um, is packed, is full loaded of uh, great fighters. And you know, and if I do decide to to make that move to uh, to the, the welterweight division, you know, um, just anybody anybody that's in the top ten, um, I'll be willing to fight. All right. Now I know you're fighting. In your hometown, correct? Uh, pretty close, pretty close. I mean, uh, I'm about, I grew up about 45 minutes from the Philly area. Um, I grew up in the outskirts, which is about, yeah, 45 minutes. Uh, so it's pretty much, you know, my hometown. Um, it's just close enough to, for everybody to uh, come in and, and, and watch me fight. So do you think that fighting in your hometown is an advantage or a disadvantage? Because I know I've heard a lot of guys say that, the adrenaline gets pumping. Sometimes you do things you wouldn't normally do. Um, what's your take on it? Um, honestly, uh, I don't have a problem with it. You know, um, uh, you know, I, I keep my composure. Um, I'm, you know, as a professional, you know, like I just go in there and just, you know, and, and do the work, do the stuff that I need to be doing. Um, you know, yeah, it does ex- get exciting at times. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I keep my composure and, you know, and just uh, follow the, the instructions that uh, my trainer has, has me doing, you know, wants me to do. So, uh, you know, I stick to, to my plan. So, uh, it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be too crazy. Uh, you know, I'm sure that in walking in to the ring, it'll get crazy. But, you know, when I hit that, the, when I step in the ring, you know, my composure is, is focused on, on what I'm supposed to be doing and, uh, you know, that's just how I take it. So assuming that you train around the Philadelphia area, is, uh, you know, are those still, those gym wars still going on? Uh, you know, is it still like it was back in the day? Um, definitely those, those war, uh, gym wars are still going around. I mean, uh, I had um, uh, Chris, Christopher Brooker, who is a minivan on his car, he's from Philly, uh, came to my gym and we sparred 10 uh, hard round from the from the first round to the tenth round. It was very competitive, and uh, you know it was just it was hard. I mean, you know, harder for me because you know um, I'm a, I'm a lot lighter than he than he is. Uh, he fights at 168. You know, I fight uh, anywhere between 47 and 54. You know, so it's uh you know when we're getting ready for fights, you know we're not walking around 54 or 68. You know, he's up he's up there at least 190. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty much was sparring uh, cruiserweight. And, again, you know, I believe those gym wars still go, happening in the, in, the, in the city of Philadelphia. All right. So yeah. who's your promotional team now and who's your trainer? Um, my promotional team now is uh, Marshall Kaufman, who, who was uh, my trainer at one time uh, in the beginning of my career when I was uh, 20, 24-0. Uh, with 22 knockouts um, before I lost to Margarito. Um, and uh, now um, 
my trainer is Joe Pastor, who was, uh, you know, another guy that was uh, my strength and conditioning coach uh, with uh, Marshall Kaufman, who is my promoter now. Uh, so Joe is now, um, he's the, you know, he's the head trainer now. Um, so I, I have my, pretty much have my my team back now. It just, it just now that my, uh, Marshall Kaufman, he's just playing the role as a promoter, and Joe is taking over to the head trainer uh, job. Yep, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, um, so at 37 years of age, that's how old you are, correct? 36. 36, all right. How is that? Was... years on, Jeremiah. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I'm, reminded of my bir- I'm reminded of my birthday coming up, so uh, I'm just adding years to everybody else's life because I want to be younger. <laughs> I was just wondering, how is training at 36 compared to when you're, you know, 26? Is it harder? Do you gotta, you gotta work that much harder to get the weight off, or does, you know, just does it come naturally to you? Uh, you know what? Honestly, it, came, it comes natural to me. You know, um, I know uh, for a while I was um, up to 176, 177. Um, you know, the whole entire time that I was like, you know, just uh, just going to the gym and just keep keeping myself in shape. Um, but as soon as I hit, you know, I got that, that fight, um, six weeks ago, you know, it just seems like my body knows right away, you know, when it's time to drop weight and stuff like that. And, um, I have no problem making the weight. All right. And, well, you know, I, I don't, wish you, I mean, I train, I still train, I still train as hard as I did when I was 19, 20 years old. And, uh, you know, and I feel good. Well, um, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Hopefully you'll come on after you win this fight and maybe next week and tell us how you broke this guy down in like a round or two. Um, so we definitely wish you the best of luck. Now, Thank we're going to go ahead and start our preview for the Canelo Alvarez-Amir Khan fight. Since you fought Canelo, do you want to sit in and talk a little bit about your feelings about that fight? Sure. I mean, you know, that fight with Canelo, I mean, it was a fight that I took in uh, three weeks' notice. You know, I was home just uh, minding my own business, not in the gym, you know, just um, hanging out with my family, you know, my kids and my wife. Um, what a fighter should do after they're done, you know, with, with a fight. Uh, so when I got, I got the call, uh, I decided to take the fight um, in his home backyard pretty much uh, in Mexico City. Uh, I fought him, fought my, uh, Canelo, and I want to say a ring that was maybe – 15 by 15 at the most. The ring was real small. Uh, I was, it was, it seemed to me like I was fighting in a bo- uh, phone booth. Um, but you know, it was a hard fight. Um, you know, Canelo. You know, being a bigger guy, I mean, I, I know for a fact that he was at least 185 pounds uh, when he walked in that in the in the in the ring, uh, where wow. I came in at one at 162, 163 at the most. Um, so he was the, he was the bigger guy that night, and you know he he was a better night fighter. I mean, you know it's it was one of the nights that that I, I had to knock him out to to win. So uh, um, uh, you know, go ahead. Sorry about that. So no, but yeah, I mean it was a hard, it was a hard fight. It was, he's a good fighter. You know, he's not as strong as people make it seem that he is. Uh, he does have a punch, and he, he is strong, but not as strong as people make it seem like he is. All right, so I'm going to I mean, ask I, I, you and Jeremiah. I'm going to ask you and Jeremiah both the same question. Don't mean to interrupt you, Jeremiah, but I want both your opinions. We'll start off with Kermit first. Do you think that Khan has the style to give Canelo problems? And then the second part of the question is: Do you think that the weight difference is going to be too much either way, though? Um, first, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, you know, um. Khan, he can box. You know, he he's got good, great combinations. Um, you know, he's a little taller than than uh, than than uh, Canelo. Um, so I think that uh, with Khan moving up to 154, 155, where he's at, I think he he holds the weight uh, pretty good. I mean, he seems in pictures anyways. Um, I think he'll do okay. Uh, I just don't. I just don't think that he'll be able to take the the Canelo shots. Uh, you know, we we've seen him get knocked out at 140. We've seen him get knocked out at 147. So, um, you know, I'm I'm 
I'm not sure if I actually want uh, if I want to watch the.